I've been pushing these greaves forward for a little while now. Uh, two pairs for two different folk. And uh, on the effigies, there's no sign of any buckles or straps holding either of the greaves together. I suspect on one set it's an artistic um, bit of artistic license uh, on the effigy just to make it look nice and smooth. But we wanted to run along with the same look, so we're going to use this technology which is clearly shown on the other one. And what it is, is it's a little spring lock or button press or something like that, whatever you want to call it instead of a strap and buckle. If you put straps and buckles on, they can stretch over time. They can get knocked off uh, and smashed and broken quite easily. And this was a technology that was developed uh, relatively early on. Uh, so it ran side by side and then eventually pretty much replaced straps and buckles, I think, in most cases. And uh, I've got a little bit of work to do on this one yet, just so you can do it with your finger, which you can't quite do at the moment. Um, but what you do is you give it a press, take it past the hole, and then it springs open. And there it is. It's a little bit of sprung steel, which I'll show, attached to the front, ground off at the back there so that when you go back, get things lined up, you just get it past the grieve edge. Get your grieve to fit. Oop, I've gone the wrong way. There we go. Get your grieve to fit. And there you go, blocked. Won't stretch or open. Lovely job. First thing to do um, when you're looking at this is get the holes drilled into the greave uh, rather than make the spring and then try and match the holes. It's far easier, I find, doing it this way. So I'm going to have the actual point that the customer will manipulate the button is going to be on the back one back here. Now you can see I've already got and worked out my closure. It's held in place a good ways by the ankle down here already. It's one of these lobed ankles and it's bottom one's holding it in there a little so make sure you get things all together where they need to be there we go and that catch will be just pulling it in ever so slightly there so what I do is the one they're going to manipulate that can be fairly close to here because there's nothing underneath it so there's no lap uh, going on so I've been doing them about that far the one at the front if you do it too close you can't manipulate anything because what's happening underneath here is you've got a layer, the top one there, then you have the back of the greave going in, and then if you have this coming off here, it can't move. There's, there's no, no elasticity, there's no movement in the metalwork. So you want that forward a bit, and what I've been doing is doing them about this far forward. So that's where I'm going to put my uh, hole for the front rivet. So you get those drilled first and then you can match everything to them as opposed to the other way around which is a right pain and you end up with holes in all the wrong places. So, drill that through, sort that out. So my two holes are drilled. In this instance in the back here I'm using a bit of 6mm. It's easy to get to with um, a gauntlet on or whatever uh, to push out the way. So I'm using a bit of 6mm bar there which I'll show in a mo. And at the front here I've got a 1 8 um, drill. Now for the uh, uh, hole spring, for the spring itself, what I'm using are hacksaw blades. You can get these bimetal hacksaw blades or cheaper ones now are these carbon steel hacksaw blades. They generally don't need uh, tempting and kneeling, softening or anything like that to them. They've got a nice returnable flex on them which when they're cut to a short length, as this will be in a minute, got one here, stronger, and they take the shape, the space you need, beautifully. A little bit of work on the ends as we'll show, and they've just got that nice spring.
still got a little bit of prep work to do on this uh, just to smooth that out and to tidy up this end there because it's all quite jaggedy at the moment but what we're looking at is just seeing where we're at so this won't lie particularly well inside at the moment I can even get it open there we go uh, because this is straight and that's got a curve on it but we want to preserve the elasticity in this we want to put the perfect curve in because it'll end up being away from here and not pushing against it which is what we want but we can see here how there's about a two three mil gap where that curves over that and that's flat and we relieve that by just touching down this top edge which is why I've not uh, ground that round nicely yet so we'll quickly touch that down and tidy it back now the length of this obviously I can't fit that in that space I'd need to wrap it right round so what we do is just make a first pass it's only a rough guess so I need to close it all up properly get that on there find a pen make a mark good half inch back from the hole and get that cut and what I find helps as well is just snip the corners because they get jammed up in the back here and give it an artificial feel. There we go. A little bit of a bend. Go gently. It will bend in your hand. You can probably even snap it. So just go gentle, not too far. Reach across, get a nut and bolt. Just drop it in. You can see that these aren't that difficult really. Not to get accurate, you just need to take your time. Think about the order you're doing things in before you do them. That's a bit I've found has changed the most over the years of doing this. It changes the way I think of projects. You're trying to see the end and work back from there always. I'm just tightening it up. It doesn't have to be too tight, but equally you don't want it flapping in the wind because we need to know where this hole is. Then what you do, pop it under, get everything set up, as, <coughs> excuse me, as squarely as you can. So there we go, we're in situ. That's where I want it to hold, just like that. I want that slight squeeze on the catchment. That's where the measurements went to. And make a mark. The button for this uh, press, press stud, press lock, whatever you want to call it, it's going to be made out of some 6mm bar in this instance. I want to make a little rivet out of that. Uh, first thing I tend to do always because I've got bits and off cuts all over the place is check oh, burrs on there hang on <laughs> let's check it fits hang on always worth checking so I can see there keep my mistakes in that that isn't properly 6mm yet. I've drilled it a bit quick I'm trying to push on with the film and the hole, so I've done it quickly, is a little more triangular than it is round. You can see it just about there, so it sort of sweeps down and up to a point. So we're going to bore it out of it. Again, shall we? So, I've got rid of all the burrs off of there because this has been cut with bolt coppers. It still doesn't want to fit. <laughs> oh, there we go. 
this just needs a little bit more work so we'll keep the mistakes in so just get a file tidy it up When you drill, if you go straight to the larger hole with the drill bits, it can make a hole that's a little more triangular than it is round. There we go. Which is what's happened there. So, live and learn, take your time. So, we've got our 6mm button ready to go. Now I have to make this have a shank on it so I can fit it to this quite straightforward I just tend to use a drill and a grinder so I'll uh, show you how I do that next so here defenders and glasses on what I'm going to do is pop on a shank here so first I'm going to just touch it down tidy it square and then put in about three four probably about five mil by the time I'm done shank on the end which is approximately um, the same size as an eighth of an inch or about three mil We're making it, if you remember, to go on there. So I've got this as a got this as a rough ready. We're making it, if you remember, so it can go on here as our button. So that's the size that I want this to become. I've just found this to be a straightforward way of doing it. Just check I'm not going to be in the way. A little bit, we'll see how we go. So we get the drill spinning gently as before grind on and away we go So, because it doesn't take long, I just want to make sure that fits on there. And it does, and I've got enough at the back to be able to shank that. So, we'll get this attached to that and then make a cut. Just get it held on the, the anvil there. And gently... Take the shank down and just rivet as normal. You could make this easier for yourself and shorten this, but I find a bit later I'll be shortening it again. So I'll just see how I get on holding it. If it becomes too much of a pain, then I'll trim it. But for the most part, it's okay. And it's not important at what o'clock this is sticking out because you just rotate it and use it as necessary. There you go, I've gripped the uh, spring, try not to strike the spring and deforming it. It's not the end of the world if you do, unless it creases the metal and then you're starting again. There you go, that's riveted there, just give it a little check. That's nice and secure on there, so we'll offer this back up without poking out the greave. Then we can mark it, cut it and trim it down. I've got the bits put together now. Um, you can probably just about tell. It's a bit of work here. What I've done is I've moved the hole that I put about a mil that way. I wasn't satisfied that it was tight enough um, and it was opening. So I've moved it all that way. Uh, there's a video on how to do that, um, which I'll try and find the link to. Um, but all I did was, was shove it down. So what we've got then there's this dirty grey button, which of course you're never going to get your leg in and out of that. So make sure 
Get your nut and bolt done up nice and tight. The inside is laying nice and flush. So I can show you what I mean. Look down at my cup of tea. There you go. You can see it's laying reasonably flush in there. It's not in a straight line, sort of like this, because then you'd never get your ankle in there. It's touching the sides nicely. And simply make a mark. Give yourself a bit of room because you're going to be doing some filing. Um, but not too much because you don't want to be doing too much filing. So made a mark up there and we'll cut that off. So we've made our cut and we've now got a button which is a little bit closer to the shape of the final one. But we've got a bit of filing to do and I thought well, rather than do that with the files and trying to show the angles it would be a lot easier uh, just draw a quick picture. So here then is the greave and the bit of spring underneath. Uh, so this is inside the greave, this outside the greave. And what we have currently, I'll exaggerate a bit, is a bit of steel poking up and that's our button. Now if you think of the way that the mechanism works, is this one? I've still got the last part of this to do, which is why I've got to push this. It helps me prove a point. Move my T. So if you think about what's going on, when we get to here, in that lock, there we go, obviously the greave now is pushing against the button. So we want to make it easier, so rather than having it at 90, we chamfer it down. So there's a glacis there, so rather than it being like that, it's like that. Uh, but on that plane. So you give it a little push, so we haven't got far to go. And you can see how it's received that quite nicely. Now we don't want the same on the back edge here because that edge there, so there you go, this edge here at the 12 o'clock has got to resist being pulled open. So if we put a slope on there, it's just going to be flapping about in the wind like a good one. So we've got that goes down there, gets to there. Yeah, I'll grease the right way around at the top here, not paying attention. And then it should, with a little bit of persuasion, lock. And it can't be opened because that button is higher just than the edge of the groove. So when we look at this, what we want is a uh, file work that does that along the edge with a little round piece at the end and that so we can push it and it goes into the greave in the locked position and we don't want it really I found at a right angle there because it makes it very difficult to take out you want a little bit of curvature there on the top but just a touch and you want to make sure obviously this is where my drawing falls to pieces you want to make sure that when the greave is actually closed it's below that curve is up here then it's just going to keep springing open every time you flex your calf you know just like sort of vaguely there so we've got to file there we are we're going to file that edge down jam for the top a little bit make sure it fits in and out a few times and then we're there so i'll do the filing off camera and i'll show you the final piece because it's a bit dull just watching a man file something So we're all done and ready for the first proper test. Obviously it's just a nut and bolt here, but get it done as tight as you can at the top here uh, to get it tested. Now you can have a, a nice tab here and if you just touch the end a bit, bear in mind that there's not much room in there for the leg. That can just catch that one. I might do it to this one, see how I feel. And I might take the button a bit lower, but the, the, everything's there ready to take a look at. So for the closure then, just make sure that pops inside. We've got these lobed ankles on here, but then we get to this point, it's quite straightforward. Just give that a touch. If you remember, we beveled all of this edge down now, so it looks like my drawing does here. So just line it up because it's a bit off the line. There we go. And then pop that down so you can see it's just disappeared beneath the edge. Make sure everything's lining up, and then hopefully, there it is. 
there's that noise we're after and that now is caught good and strong the top will be secured with the demi greave and its strap across the back there and you've got that little bit of room for movement as the uh, car flexes and gets a bit bigger and so on and now I like to try and leave that in there if I can touch of movement and then to get rid of it this is why I was thinking I might make it about a half a mil further in but just get it past itself pop it open easy as that so there you go hope that was useful you see they're not very difficult to make um, not so hard as you might think to get them accurate it's just a case of taking your time and not being afraid to move things if you have to